welcome to a bookish Friday video. So today's video is going to be my April TBR slash Owls Readathon TBR. So throughout the month of April, okay just drop something, uh, throughout the month of April we are celebrating the Owls and if you don't know what the Owls are it is a readathon that um, G from Book Roast Channel um, created. I believe this is her third year doing it. This is my second year taking part and she has created a whole um, like little booklet that I have printed off and the work that goes into this, I mean it's just phenomenal. Like there are pages and pages of this booklet that she has created. So if you don't know what the owls are, uh, basically it is a readathon that is based on Harry Potter. So the owls are the exams that Harry Potter and all of his friends will take during their time at Hogwarts School of Wizardry. And um, so G from Book Roast channel, I will link her information for you down below if you want to check her out. Um, she has created this readathon um, and she's created this Wizarding Careers Guidebook. And um, so you get to pick a career and then using the um, classes that you would need to pass, that would choose your prompts for what you are going to do. So there's different careers in here. I'll just read them out to you. You could be an outcast. You could be an astronomer, an ornithologist. That's what I chose last year. An aurora, a broom maker, a care of magical children, culinary sorcerer, a curse breaker, a graphic designer, a healer, a herbologist, a Hogwarts professor, a journalist or writer, a librarian, a mage of visual arts, a magic zoologist, a metal charmer, a mind medic, a ministry worker, a potioner, a Quidditch referee, a seer, a spellmaker, trader of magical tomes, or a wand maker. And then there are extra courses and seminars and training added for this year. Now this, the, last year we didn't get these, but this year to make it a little bit extra, um, not that it needs anything extra, the poor lass must run herself ragged trying to do all this, but the extra courses, seminars and training, you can have an Animagus training, Dragon Tamer training, learn to operate a locomotive trains, Magical Shop Management, Legal Defence of Fantastic Beasts Seminar and one that was purposely made for me, obviously, was the Mer People Linguistics course. Yeah, I'll be doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just, even if you don't actually end up taking part in this readathon, just give it a look through. The amount of work that G has put into this is phenomenal and the girl needs a round of applause. She just needs all the admiration that you can give her because it's phenomenal. She is amazing for doing this. I thoroughly enjoyed my time doing the Owls Readathon last year. It really, really blew my mind and was probably... no. Definitely my favourite readathon of 2019. And she has just gone above and beyond herself again this year. So, what career am I going to be doing? Well, I'm going to be a librarian uh, because I would love to work in a library. Uh, so, this is a page for the librarians. And I'm not going to read you all the bump, um, but for your key traits, you need to be knowledgeable, brave, adventurous and resourceful. Because librarians in the wizarding world don't just loan out books and, um, and catalogue them. No, 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 no. We hunt down rare and, um, and, and strange books. Yeah, we do. Um, so, for my owls, I need to complete Ancient Runes, Arithmancy, Defence Against the Dark Arts, History of Magic and Transfiguration. 
and obviously as well later on in the year we will also be doing our newts which is another um exam in the uh, wizarding world so we also have our newts prompts at the bottom here as well ready for later on in the year and i will probably do a video about that so uh, yeah just keep your eye out for that in the future so I have one, two, three, four, five prompts for being a librarian. But as I said, I will be doing, <laughs> I will of course be doing the extra seminar of the Mer People Linguistics. This is to help me uh, learn to speak with the Mer People. I can live with the Mer People and learn um, about their ways and their culture and their society. I cannot wait. Yes, so for my owls, I need to learn herbology. So that is six prompts that I need to complete um, in order to become a librarian and with merpeople linguistics as a side barrier. So um, we have at the back here, we have the list of classes and their prompts. So uh, the first prompt was ancient runes and this is the heart rune for this year. Uh, so we need to read a book with a heart on the cover or in the title. Now when I saw this I immediately realised that I had a book on my March TBR that would be perfect for this prompt but I haven't quite got round to it yet. So spoilers! I'm putting it over into April. This is a third month. I will have promised myself. No, fourth. Okay, so first of all, let me apologise if the angle has changed, my hair has changed, um, and the lighting has changed, but my battery camera died. Hair on the mouth. Um, my battery camera died, and so while it charged up, I went off and did a couple of other things, like sorted my hair out and other such things. So where were we? So I believe I was talking about A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Camera. Um, this is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Um, I won't give you the synopsis for this one because obviously spoilers, but the first one is based on a Beauty and the Beast retelling where a young girl called Harper, who I believe suffers with cerebral palsy, uh, witnesses what she believes to be a kidnapping and when she tries to intervene, she herself gets kidnapped and taken to this strange land where a prince is cursed to live his 18th year over and over again until he can find a woman to fall in love with him and uh, Harper being a more modern modern woman is not so easy to fall in love so um, yeah I absolutely love the first book and there was a side character in A Curse So Dark and Lonely who I really loved with all of my heart and that was Grey and the one thing I will tell you about A Heart So Fierce and Broken is that this book focuses in on Grey as a more uh, he's like the main character in this one so I don't know where this story is going to go with him there were some revelations at the end of A Curse So Dark and Broken no A Curse So Dark and Lonely um that we I think Grey is going to look into during this book um but I am really excited about this one so this one is for my ancient runes um to read a book with heart or the word heart in the title or a heart on the cover so that is that book the next prompt I need for my librarian career is arithmancy and that is um, to magical qualities of number two balance and opposites read something outside your favorite genre so this is great because I read way too many fantasies and I need to read some other genres this could have been a pick between contemporaries or thrillers, to be honest. Um, but I'm really not in the mood for thrillers right now. So I know that would technically be outside of my comfort zone. But I really don't feel like reading it at the moment. I'm just not in that mind concept. So I've gone for a contemporary and I've gone for one that I got just last year. And that is The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. This one is a little bit more of a hard hitting contemporary because this focuses a story on a young girl called Amelie. 
Amelie, uh, who fell hard for Reese, and she thought he loved her too. But she's starting to realise that real love isn't supposed to hurt like this. So now she's retracing their story, revisiting all the places he made her cry. Because if she works out what went wrong, perhaps she can finally learn how to get over him. Yeah, I am looking forward to this one. This one is a Waterstone Special Edition with those beautiful sprayed edges. You know me and my sprayed edges. So, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to reading this one. And that was to um, for arithmancy, uh, which is to read something outside of my favourite genre. Now, the next... Uh, class that I will be taking is Defence Against the Dark Arts and the prompt for this one is Grindelow's book set at the sea or the coast. So for that one hopefully I will be reading or should have finished uh, the first book in this series uh, within the munch, munch? within the month of March. <laughs> wow! Um, so I am going to read the sequel. I don't think I'm going to get to this in March. I put it in as a possibly maybe for my March TBR, but I'm not going to get to it. So I'm going to read it in April instead. It is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. It is the second book in the Pinch of Magic series. Uh, this one again, Waterstone, Sprayed Edges. <laughs> Sorry, if it's got sprayed edges, I buy it. I, 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 I'm, I'm a magpie, okay? I like pretty things. Um, so I'm assuming this one is set at sea, considering there's a boat on there and there's water on there. And I have actually, at the time of filming, started um, A Pinch of Magic and they are literally, it is set on an island. So there's water and sea around them so i'm gonna read this one for this prompt for the defense against the dark arts um to read a book set at the sea or the coast um this is about three sisters with a magical secret race against time to find a place that exists only in fairy tales a journey that will take them into unimaginable danger obviously this is a sequel uh to the first book i'm i'm only about 50 pages or so into the first book so I can't even really uh, tell you what that one's about but if you want to know a bit more about the synopsis for these two books then just look them up on Goodreads um, then you should be able to get a really good idea of what they are about. They are middle grades so they're pretty quick to read so I am well looking forward to this one. The next class I will be taking is History of Magic and the prompt for that one is witch hunts read a book featuring witches or wizards now for this one i did think about reading the next book in the harry potter series because i haven't read the whole set yet i haven't read the whole series um but when i looked at what the next book was i uh the next book i would be reading is harry potter and the Order of the Phoenix and I believe that one is over 800 nearly 900 pages on ebook which was the only way that I could get it other than uh, through my local library um, which during the current coronavirus um, situation my local library has now closed for the foreseeable future so no more library books for me for a while um, but um, yeah, I could get it on ebook, but it was going to be 900 pages, I believe, and I was not down for that. Not at all, she says, but wait till you see it later on. You'll see why I wasn't in for a 900 page Harry Potter book when I show you some other books. Anyway, so I scrapped that idea and I've gone for another book much shorter with witches in and that is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. So I read The Wicked Deep last year, completely fell in love with it. So um, I really, really am looking forward to reading this story. Uh, this is about a a walker woman. Um, let me just read you the synopsis. Uh, Be careful of the dark, dark wood, especially the woods surrounding the town of Furhaven. Some say these woods are magical, cursed even. Uh, Rumoured to be a witch, only Nora Walker knows the truth. She and the walker women before her have always shared a special connection with the woods. And it's this special connection that leads Nora to Oliver Huntsman, the same boy who disappeared from the camp for wayward boys weeks ago and in the middle of the worst snowstorm in years. 
He should be dead, but here he is alive and left in the woods with no memory of the time he's been missing. So, yes, witches, magic, woods, creepiness. I am going to live for this story. I have had some people, I have heard some people say this wasn't as good as The Wicked Deep and they didn't enjoy it as much, but everybody's opinion is their own. And so I can't wait to dive into this and see what my thoughts are. So this one is my history of magic uh, prompt to read a book featuring witches or wizards. So the next prompt that I will be doing will be Transfigurations. Animagus Lecture. Read a book or series that includes shape-shifting. So for this one, I went with quite an obvious one because you know me, I'm a fan of mermaids. So this one is Fathomless by Jackson Pierce. Jackson Pierce, and this is a retelling of The Little Mermaid. So I have read uh, Red Sister by Jackson Pierce, which was a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, and I really enjoyed that story. I believe I passed that book on to Charlotte from A Wacky World of Lottie. I hope she's enjoyed it. If she's read it, if she hasn't, then she needs to get on it. Um, but this is a Little Mermaid's retelling, um, and it says on the back, it was easy to pull him into the deep, down to the ocean floor. She leaned over the boy and kissed him as the last precious bits of oxygen left his lips and floated to the surface, and then he was dead and nothing else had changed yet. So yeah, I believe it focuses on two girls. One is a, uh, a mermaid, and then the other one is um, one of a set of triplets who just, um, who has some magical power, um, but feels a little bit out of place. And then they meet a boy and you know, things happen. So I'm assuming that there's going to be some kind of shape shifting in here. If not specifically in this book, um, there's definitely the shape shifting in the Little Mermaid story, which is what this book is based off. So this one is for Transfigurations to read a book um, including shape shifting. So that's Fathomless by Jackson Pierce. Now, because I mentioned that I want to do the Mermaid Linguistics Extra Course, obviously I have to uh, complete the prompt for that course as well. And for that, I have to pass Herbology. And so the prompt for Herbology is Mimbulus Mimbletonia. Read a book that title begins with M. So this was pretty easy to find a book. And so I picked up The Merciless Crow by Margaret Owen. Again, this was a book that I mentioned that I might read in March, but didn't quite get around to it. I know I can get this on audiobook. So this could be the audiobook that I listen to throughout the month of April. I do like to try and uh, listen to a couple of audiobooks every month. Um, and I know I can read this via audiobook and you know, read along with it as well. And I know that the uh, sequel is coming out maybe possibly later this year or early next year. So I really do want to get this read as soon as possible to find out whether I want to read the sequel or not. Um, so yeah, I believe this is the story about a young girl who is classed as a crow, which is the lowest um, denominator in her society and crows deal with the dead and one day she finds a dead body that is not quite as dead as is expected and she has to decide whether she helps that person out or not. I've mentioned the synopsis for this quite a few times so you probably know this by now but definitely getting this book read in April. <laughs> I think that's the that's that's basically what my owl's uh, prompts consists of books that I should have read and had said I was going to read earlier this year and haven't got round to. So now that they're going into a readathon, now they'll definitely get read. <laughs> so bad. So I'm going to be reading The Merciless Crow, uh, Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen for my herbology uh, prompt which is to read a book beginning with M. And G did say that the word the or a does not count as part of the title if you want to uh, make it easier on yourself because a lot of books start with the or a ah. so uh, yeah the title actually is Merciful Crow so 
that's where that comes from. So to become a librarian with my Mermaid Linguistics, these are all the books that I need to read for my Owls Readathon. So as you can see, there's not actually many books there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, six books within the month. And for most people, that would probably be enough. However, for me, I generally tend to read between uh, 12 and 16 books a month so that is a very simple uh, TBR for me so because there are actually 12 prompts for the owls um, I'm going to attempt to read all 12 books so I have picked out books for the other prompts but the ones I have shown you so far are my priorities and then the other ones will be um, you know as I finish my priority ones I can then move on to these ones so uh, the first one I want to talk to you about is the potions prompt and the potions prompt is shrinking solution read a book under 150 pages. Now this was actually really, really difficult for me. I don't have that many books under 150 pages, not even some of my graphic novels that I have left on my shelves that I haven't read so far. So I turned to my non-fiction and I have here one of the Penguin Monarchs books and this is written by John Guy and it is based on Henry VIII. So I have shown these in a book haul recently. They are nice short little books um, on the kings and queens of England and so yeah I'm going to read some non-fiction during April. Uh, so this is just basically telling the life and times of Henry VIII. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting read. I have got myself some tabs so that I can uh, annotate this as well while I'm going through it um, because I I want to start doing that with my non-fiction so that I'm not just reading it for reading's sake. I'm actually going to learn something from it as well and be able to reference back to it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start doing that with my non-fiction book. So it might take me a little bit longer to read this than normal, um, but uh, I can't wait to learn a little bit more, uh, more than just what we get told at school um, about Henry VIII. So I do love the Tudors, so I'm very interested to get into this one. So that is going to be my potions prompt, which is to read a book under 150 pages. For my next book, it is for Muggle Studies, and the prompt for that is uh, to read a book from the perspective of a muggle, so a non-magical person. And for that one, I'm going to read a book that I've heard so many good reviews about. It is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Now, I know Charlotte from Wacky World of Lottie recently read this, and she absolutely loved it. She thought I hauled she thought I had already read this, but I haven't as yet. I keep meaning to read this and I keep putting it in readathons, not getting around to it. So this time, hopefully, I will get around to it. Um, so this is about a boy uh, called August and he has a facial disfigurement and it's all about his experiences with school and other kids I should imagine and I am told that you're going to need tissues when you read this so I should best be prepared. So that is my muggle studies prompt to read a book in the perspective of a muggle. The next book is probably going to mess up my lighting so I'm only going to flash it once or maybe twice um, and this one is for divination and the prompt for that is third eye assign numbers to your tbr and use a random number generator to pick your book so for this one i didn't film it sadly i completely forgot to do that but i was quite happy with the choice that it made so i didn't want to pick again uh, so i have two sets of bookshelves with six shelves each but then i also have books across the top and i wanted to include those in this uh pick so I put in the random number generator uh, between 1 and 13 and it picked uh, shelf 11 
I believe, which happens to be this shelf here, which is right in the middle. Now, since doing this random number generator thing, I have shifted some of my shelves around because I got some new shelves. <coughs> So, uh, there are actually no more books on this shelf, in all honesty, um, but at the time of picking, this was my fairy loot uh, shelf. So, any books that came in fairy loot boxes, I would put on this shelf. And so, there was only a couple of books on there, I believe there was only six at the time. Uh, so, I put in the random number generator again, numbers one to six, and it pulled up number three three i believe and number three was this one it is woven in moonlight by isabel ibanez now as i say it does mess up my lighting so there's the front cover and now i'm going to put it down again before my camera goes nuts so this book is about um bolivian um politics and history um and um I swear down, Siri. No, I don't. Just piss off. Um, so it it is based on a young girl who is uh, a decoy to her condessa. So um, she acts as a decoy, and her people have lost everything when the usurper Atok used an ancient relic to summon ghosts and drive the Illustrians from La Ciudad. Now Zamina is motivated by her insatiable thirst for revenge and her rare ability to spend spin thread from moonlight. There's a lot going on in this fantasy novel, a lot of um, spies and intrigue and magic systems and all sorts of interesting things. And I really can't wait to read this book. So that is Woven in Moonlight by Isabel Ibanez for my uh, divination prompt, which is to pick a random uh, book from my shelf. So that is this one. The next prompt is for charms and the prompt for that is Lumos Maxima white cover. So to pick a book with white cover. So I grabbed all the books on my bookshelf that had white covers and I looked at each and every one of them and went, no, I don't fancy reading any of you. Not at all. So I kind of stretched this one a little. I chose White Cat by Holly Black. So it has white on the cover, the words are white, and the cat's supposed to be white, but is obviously slightly uh, murky white because of the um, design on this. And no, I haven't creased it. That is the design of the cover. Um, so yeah, this is White Cat by Holly Black. And it says, you're only a fingertip away from another world. Um, so castle is cursed cursed by the memory of the 14 year old girl he murdered life at school is a constant trial life at home even worse no one at home is ever going to forget that castle is a killer no one at home is ever going to forget that he isn't a magic worker and now he is being haunted by a white cat so yeah things are obviously going to happen this is the first book in a trilogy i do believe and i know holly black does a lot of like magical fey kind of stories i've read quite a few of her books now and absolutely love them uh, so i'm happy to uh delve into one of her um other trilogies i'm very excited for this much more excited than i was about any of the other white books on my shelves so i am reading white cat by holly black for the uh, charms prompt which was to read a book with a white cover it has white on it it's, <laughs> it's okay there's no police in this situation so who's to argue with me <laughs> Can read whatever i want um okay so the next prompt is care of magical creatures and for this prompt is hippogriffs read a book with a creature with a beak on the cover now for this one this one is one of my most exciting books in this list of um tbr 
because it is the newest Sarah J Mass. It is Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. This is the Waterstone Special Edition with those beautiful sprayed edges. Um, and this is the reason why I didn't want to pick up Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter. Um, because this is a chunker. This is 800 pages of beautiful Sarah J Mass writing. I know this is going to tear my heart out. I have seen people's vlogs on reading this book and they have been sobbing and just ripped apart by this book. And considering I have just finished Kingdom of Ash and absolutely lost it on that book. I am just, wait for my March wrap up. I will, I will let you know all about my feelings for that particular book. I will. So I am highly anticipating this book. I cannot wait to get into this. Yes, I know I said that the first six books are my priority, but oh, I cannot wait to delve into this one. So this is my Care of Magical Creatures prompt, uh, which is um, to read a book with an animal with a beak on the cover. And there is a bird there with a beak. So that counts. And the last book that is on my April TBR for the Owls Readathon is the book to complete the astronomy prompt. And the astronomy prompt is night classes, read a book majoritively at night. And I thought, well, I have got some massive books on there. So I went with something that I could read in one night which was a graphic novel. So this was The Wicked and the Divine, the Faust Act. Um, this is the first book in the this graphic novel series. Yes, I could have picked this book for the prompt of reading a book with a white cover, but I'd already picked it for this prompt. So um, yeah, I could have chosen something else for this prompt, but I, it is what it is. <laughs> is what it is. So this is just a graphic novel. I have no idea what this is about but it has some awesome um, artwork in it, uh, some very colourful pages, um, some more cool pages. Uh, so yeah, so lots of different um, styles in here. So yeah, I believe it's got um, every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved, they are hated. In two years, they are all dead. It's happening now, it's happening again. So starting a new graphic novel series, I have quite a few on the go. Um, I wish I had the next Death Note novel. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll be reading this one for my astronomy prompt, which is to read a book the majoritively at night. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'll get this read in one night and that will be over and done with quick and easy. I needed a quick and easy one after picking Crescent City. That's, that's why that got picked. So that is it. That is all the prompts for my Owls Readathon. Um, I again just want to say thank you so much to G from Book Roast Channel for creating such a wonderful and amazing and such a deep in-depth readathon. It's not just here's a couple of prompts, read a couple of books. There's so much goes into this but you can make it as, as complicated or as simple as you want so if you want to know any more information just don't be afraid to ask me in the um, questions in the comments section down below and I will try to help you out as much as I can if I can't help you I will definitely um, like send you to G's uh, channel and um, I'm sure that she will happily help you as well or some of her uh, helpers in this readathon will help you as well so um, there's they're also on Twitter as well magical readathon um, on Twitter so um, there'll be reading sprints and things like that going on throughout the month of April as well so lots of things going on to try and encourage you to read those books and get those prompts done and get your career. So yeah, those are all 12 books that I'm going to be reading. But as I say, my um, priority are these first six books. So that is it. That is my 
April TBR, which includes all the books that I'm planning to read for the Owls Readathon. Thank you very much for watching. I know it's been a long one. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!